In today's video of Doll Aid Transformations, I'm going to be making over a group of dolls that I found at Savers in October of 2021. I hope you enjoy their makeover process, so let's get to it. Cabby Fever, we've got it. These dolls we all got together at Savers last night. We only get to go to Savers once a year because it's in the city and we don't live too close to it. It's very out of the way. So we were supposed to go after Colleen's eye doctor appointment last week as I'm filming this. It's the end of October. But I was having Jeep problems so we couldn't go and Colleen was really bummed. So we ended up coming this weekend so like a little over a week later because Colleen begged me to. And I wasn't expecting to find anything because Savers is like usually a miss and if we find something it's usually maybe just like one doll. But they had all of these glorious Cabbage Patch dolls made by Coleco from the 80s. I originally was just going to buy the Kusa because I've always wanted a Lion Kusa and the baby with Tuft. But Colleen talked me into getting the other three. So these two were $4 and then these two Chinese were $3. And I think the Kusa was also $3. And then I got these... Little Mermaid people um, in a separate bag because of this mini Ariel. At this present time, they are all undressed. Some of them had scraps of clothes, but I'm filming this intro kind of in the middle of the makeover. Stay tuned to see how I clean up all of these very disgusting looking cabbies. My first order of business is going to be to undress them. Cabbage Patch dolls are the easiest things to clean, like if you're a beginner collector and you're trying to get into restoration, Cabbage Patch dolls are super easy to restore. So I recommend them. And this is a Mattel diaper. I'm gonna have to cut all of these price tags off too. It was weird because it was um, all self-checkout except one register at Savers, which I've never seen self-checkout at Savers before. That was really bizarre. Poor Landon has a hole. What a baby. Okay. And My hand is pretending to be the twin cycle. This is the laundry. Jody's dress is getting washed separately because Tammy flows bleed like nothing else based on my experience, so. And so here I am cleaning the dolls in the sink with dish soap, baking soda, and using a toothbrush to scrub it all in. I'm giving the dolls to Colleen, who's off camera, so she can wash their hair with dish soap and condition them and get them ready for the boil wash. The Cabbage Patch dolls were a completely different animal to clean because they have yarn hair. So if I have a Cabbage Patch doll with regular rooted hair like connect lawn or nylon, which I do have some Mattel dolls that have regular hair. I don't do anything to that hair until after they've come out of the washing machine because what's the point in like doing their hair just for them to run through the washing machine? So if you're cleaning Cabbage Patch with rooted hair, take care of their body first and then go do the, the rooted hair. So the Cabbage Patch dolls were really old and disgusting, so I always clean them twice, so I'll do dish soap twice, baking soda twice, and then you'll see me grab a magic eraser at some point, and I'm going over all of their um, vinyl with that, avoiding face paint because I'm pretty sure magic erasers can take off their face paint, but this really worked on the grooves of my Kusanala's face because um, the Kusas have fur texture in their plastic, and it's really hard to get in there with a toothbrush alone, and I just feel like the magic eraser does like a final polish. I would not use a magic eraser by itself, just my preference. I don't feel like it's really cleaning, more like wiping. I mean, I do house cleaning, and the people I clean for like me to use magic erasers to clean things, but I like I just can't use them by themselves. I think it's, I think it's kind of gross, so I use it as a finisher, and it works really well. And I'm sorry so much of this is off camera. I zoomed in a little bit too much, and I don't have a viewfinder, but you get the idea. I'm just scrubbing their faces, and then I'm putting them in pillowcases, and I'm using a straw cleaner and a tooth 
brush to get inside the binky mouths because there was crud in Landon's binky mouth. Don't worry, the straw cleaner, the straw brush, I don't use it for my straws. I have a separate one that's just for cleaning into small spaces like cleaning dolls or like the um, inlet valve on my washing machine gets clogged sometimes because we have hard water. And these are the dollies in the boil wash bowl soaking. We also got this Snow White Hasbro um, kitchen, Sternbeck, so I think it's called. Colleen, I gave her the task of cleaning it, which she was nervous about because usually I'm the one that does all the scrubbing, but this didn't look particularly dirty. Now it looks particularly soapy because I need to rinse it better. Well, it looks good. You turn it around. Yeah, you did a good job. I, I approve. Can't. So we're in my laundry room and I've got the Cabbage Patch dolls in pillowcases. I have them in three different pillowcases, two in each, and then I had a single by themselves. I'm adding a little bit of gain for good smell and some OxyClean into each pillowcase and then tying them tight. This protects them in the washing machine while it spins. And I also have like a coat in there I got at Savers. And I always put it on hot, the hot cycle to kill anything that might get in the stuffing and I put it on um, a light cycle to use less water. And then I'm using this laundry sanitizer, which is something newer that I've been using. It's an alternative to bleach, and it does a really good job at like just making things smell super fresh. And I'm obviously adding in regular detergent too, and like mixing it in with the water as it goes. Hey, the amateur hairstylist is assisting in the gel process. This water is a fun color. Ooh. This Ariel doll's hair is like better, but like so she needs to dry. What do you think? Professional stylist opinion. I think Ariel needs to go with in her own boil wash with water heated from the kettle. So you want to get the kettle out? Um, last time I used the kettle, you yelled at no, me. No, I will. I will walk you through it. Okay. This how we learn. Last time I used the kettle, you yelled at me. Okay, this minimum one, you want to fill it to that minimum line. Okay. And now, before you turn the water on, you make sure it's... Position right. That's what I did wrong last yeah, time. Yeah, you don't want the bottom getting wet, because that's going on the electrical plate. But you need a little more. It's okay if there's like a little bit more than that. It's better to be safe than sorry. There you go. And here I am rinsing out all of the clothes to get all the detergent off and the dirty water so I can hang them to dry. And it's important to wring them out really good because they get pretty waterlogged. You always have to criticize me. also did not dissolve the detergent well. You know, you're so mean. I hope this is the camera's rolling. <laughs> <laughs> you're so mean. The detergent doesn't clean unless it's dissolved, my dear. I was squishing it on my hands. It was gelatinous. Because Ariel had such bad hair, she got her own boil wash, as we mentioned before, and I'm spending a lot of time combing her hair out and then putting her back in the hot water to sit. And here we are hanging up the clothes so they can dry in front of a fan. Um, it takes longer in cold weather for them to dry, but this day wasn't cold enough for me to have the wood stove running, so I just put the fan on them, but wood stoves dry the clothes out really fast. My friends are out of the washing machine from their pillowcases. So you can see they survived. You do not want to put them in the dryer because they have plastic heads. Now, if you have a soft sculpture, and by that I mean like my Ralphie over here, and Beezus is an imposter. She's not real Cabbage Patch, but um, if they're all cloth like he is, his head is fabric, he's handmade, they can go in the dryer. That's fine. Um, but you do not want to put any of the plastic-headed people in the dryer. Put them on a clothing line or, because I don't really have a good spot in my yard for a clothing line, um, and I don't really want them out in the sun, I will put them on the drying rack. And the bigger dolls, so like the kids, you can kind of like put their hair over and then they kind of just drape like Blondie and Renata over here. And then the smaller people, I use their weird shaped heads to kind of like rest their chins over. And then Nala's 
totally different shape. So no, she's, so cute. she kind of looks like she's dancing or something. Like, so, right. um, and I have the fan oscillating, so it's drying the clothing and the dolls. And also, it's really important, however you hang them, make sure that like their heads are up top, so any water that gets inside their heads runs down. I noticed with like the um, baldies. They tend to get a lot of water in their heads, even if you don't soak them, just from being run in the wash. And um, sometimes, I've had to do this once where I had to take the head off because the little like hole, <laughs> there was a flap of plastic covering it so my Francisca preemie couldn't drain out. But most of the time they'll drain out. Like they were full of water sloshing around and already Muffy is like water free. But um, Landon needed to be drained better. So that's why their heads are oriented this way because you don't want water staying in their heads because then that could cause mold. So that is how I dry the cabbies and you can fit a lot on a big drying rack. And then the smaller people are just on the bed like we usually have them in front of this fan. Okay, you'll be on birthday video and say, it's my birthday, I've been here four years now, it's Halloween. Well, it's not really my birthday. I'll really be six around January. Look at me. I'm beautiful. I'm so beautiful and spoiled. Mm. Hello. Hello. Come here, Clyde. <laughs> Aww. Oh, that's nice. Rude. Clyde. Rude. Oh, no. no. Down here. The bug family. It's very dark. Can you turn that light on? Oh, it's the bug family. Oh, Pobo. Brother bug. Mr. Bug and Brother Bug. Napoleon. May I have a kiss? Kiss. Kiss. May I have a kiss? Thank y'all. Pilling is really common with the yarn hair, so I have to spend a lot of time with my Cabbage Patch Dolls with yarn hair, making sure to, first of all, straighten it out using my fingers because you can't brush it or it'll make it fray. And you can see her hair was particularly wild, Renata, over here. And then I'm going to go around with fabric scissors, and I'm going to cut off all of the little pilled bits on her hair to clean it up and make it neat and you'll see I'm gonna do a zoom in in a second of how I trim around the hairline I just do it in little sections and I spent a long time I probably spent a half an hour doing this it's just a finishing touch but I feel like it really elevates the doll's final appearance honestly these finishing touches sometimes make the biggest difference there's also something I do for dolls that have split ends. If you have dolls with saran hair, I go around and like snip off the parts of the hair that have forked and it just makes their hair so much shinier and like more full of life looking than it would if I left split ends. Same with the pilling and fraying on the yarn hair. So I put the Dodie dress on Colleen's Pepper doll. She looks so cute in it. She also looked cute in Skipper's Red Sensation outfit, but since this is Ideal Toys and she's our only Ideal Toys doll who could fit it, why not use it, right? So adorable. So I'm working on taking photos of some of these dolls who are ready to have their pictures taken for Flickr. Now their final reveal outfits might be different because I try to dress them in era appropriate things like the outfits that they could have potentially come in for my Flickr guide. So um, I got one of these heart shirts on Muffy the preemie. Obviously it's not hers, but I'm thinking that that heart shirt might have gone to Blondie. So um, either way I'm going to dress either Blondie or Renata in, in the heart shirt. Now I was looking because I got these white tights on another Cabbage Patch doll of mine, Sheldon, who is a preemie. And I wasn't sure if they were real because they, they are this very large size and they're nice quality. So I spent a long time hunting down photos of them. And they have this really specific seam on the back here. And I was able to find a combo of this heart shirt and these tights with this special sewing pattern. So I'm thinking these tights actually go with this shirt, which is awesome. I tried some stain removal treatment on Muffy's pen mark, but because it was the fall, it didn't do anything. So I'll have to go back to her in the spring and address it then, because where I live, 
it's useless to try this treatment unless it's the spring or the summer with really, really sunny days. And then in the next clip, I'm addressing a stain on my Kusa. I didn't have any OxyClean left, so I couldn't spot treat it with OxyClean, which would have been my first move. But my experience with my Kusa Tucker stain like this, it faded to a really kind of mustardy yellow color so I needed to use a little bit of bleach on it but Tucker is way lighter in color so where I put the bleach it wasn't as noticeable. So in this clip I'm just going through my bin of Disney clothes from downstairs. Some of these are also just for animated movies, it's not all technically Disney because I was hoping that maybe I'd have something mermaid-ish for my two mini aerials to wear but as I suspected there just wasn't anything that was in their size that would remotely work. I did have a mini bell dress, but I figured that I would save that for a mini bell doll in the future if I ever needed it, rather than use it on Ariel. Sort of unrelated to the video, but related in the sense that these are clothes that I ordered from Baby Wing for my cabbies. I was planning on getting myself a few outfits as a Christmas gift to myself this year, and I decided to order a little bit early, earlier than anticipated because I had all of these new dolls to dress. I mean, I have clothes for them, but it was a great excuse to buy things. I've been really, really wanting to order more from Babyland. I have ordered two other times before, but um, one was a really small order because I wasn't sure what would fit my dolls. Okay, so we have the purple minky sleeper. Ooh. I forget the name of this dress, but Colleen really wants to see it on Renata. We have the red minky sleeper, which I got the pink one of these for my birthday, and I'm totally in love with it. It's one of my favorite Cabbage Patch outfits of all time. And then not long after, they came out with it in other colors. And then we have this blue sleeper. I really love the stuff that's branded Babyland and has embroidery in case you can't tell. And um, I'm really looking forward to seeing this on uh, Daniel Joseph. And then there's these like boy outfits. Look, it's a fishing one. It's so cute. And then this one is camouflage. Previously when I've ordered, um, the stuff wasn't all in plastic bags. Some of it was just loose because it was shipped in an envelope, so I don't know if this is what they're doing for holidays. And then the last thing I got was this Santa hat, which looks really big because it's made for the softies, but um, I wanted to pair it with this red minky for our Christmas photo this year. <clears throat> Although I don't know if it's going to fit. They have an outfit that goes with this, but um, it is way too big for my dolls because these are made for the softies. Yeah, this is quite large. Let me get Baby Martin. All right, so we have Baby Martin, my first Cabbage Patch doll as an adult collector. Yeah, this is going to be huge on him. So this will actually probably fit the girls better, but I can probably like safety pin it so he can wear it so cute really nice quality too the stuff from babyland is amazing amazing quality it's like the nicest cabbage patch clothes i've i have so far and also it's even nicer than like american girl clothes that are out now all right it's the next day and Colleen and i were so excited last night after i picked her up that we addressed it all before we even ate dinner or anything and I thought I'd just show them because, um, why not? This video is about Cabbage Patch dolls and this is a good time to show them off <laughs> because I think they're really wonderful quality and if you like Cabbage Patch dolls, I really recommend Babyland. So Picasso here, he's my Jesmar guy and he is taller than my other Cabbage Patch dolls so he's really good for some of the Babyland things that are a little bit larger because I don't have any soft sculptured dolls besides Ralphie and he's a preemie from the 80s so he's very petite so unfortunately Ralphie was swimming in this even though I thought the green would look really good with his eyes so it's really well made like I wish you could feel the quality of this 
through the video, but you can't. Um, the hat's a little big, but it works, especially because he has loops. I think on Baby Martin it would be uh, too big because he's all bald. But do you see this adorable Cabbage Patch Leaf embroidery? Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. And it looks so cute on him. And uh, then we have Baby Martin in the, go, um, the fishing overalls. It looks so cute with his blue eyes. I love it. I wasn't sure who I was going to put in this outfit when I um, initially placed my order, but I'm really glad that I chose him. And uh, this is nice because I think it'll fit some of my preemies decently. This is another Babyland outfit that I got. This was for my first order. I only got this in like two other um, little things like a pair of pants and a shirt. But this is really big. It's <laughs> made for 17 inch dolls, but because it's like a swaddling outfit, um, Ralph, you can get away with wearing it but do you see how cute this is this sold out this was available for a long time based on what i could figure out but it's so cute okay then my living room you can get a sneak peek of renata she is wearing this gingham dress which is so cute and it's this silky fabric which i was really surprised by but it's like silky in a nice way and also the babyland clothes all have metal snaps they don't have velcro which i much prefer in general just because velcro picks at the doll's clothes but also because cabbage patch dolls are um cloth and the ones with yarn hair the velcro is just like a disaster um for them so I wouldn't want, like I try to avoid like things with a lot of velcro on my yarn haired dolls. And then all of the other things are on um, dolls I previously had. So this is Daniel Joseph. He looks like a little old lady in this sleeper. I love it. He's beautiful. He's my gem. He, I just got him because he was really cheap at the flea market, but I didn't know how beautiful he was because he was wearing a mouse sleeper with a hood and then we have Dennis Paul who's in the red minky sleeper and uh, this is my sleeper I already had that I got for my birthday on Joy Irene um, this was the first one it was the only one that was out when I got stuff for my birthday in August and it this is what made me like need all the colors of it because it's so well made and uh, Dennis and Joy are named after my parents and they look like my parents as Cabbage Patch dolls and then um, this is the purple one which it's dark in this corner but this is Anna Teresa who I named after my grandmother she has purple eyes and she looks so cute in this purple minky heart sleeper and uh, Wendy is wearing another one that I got for my birthday in August. The Babyland clothes like never get put away in case you can't tell. They're always changing who wears them, but they're beautiful quality. I highly recommend them. And only um, Renata so far got to wear any of the new clothes of the dolls from this video. But um, unfortunately that's because most of them are preemies. So um, these two are preemies, so they won't really fit certain uh, certain outfits from Babyland, like this one here is really long so when to get to make these two mini Ariel dolls outfits but this process is saved for an episode of Dolly Design stay tuned this is Muffy before Muffy is the same doll as Murphy um, which I knew she looked really familiar but Colin was like we can't leave her behind I have a problem. With I think the, the outfit it was throwing me off because this is a girl's outfit, which isn't even for a preemie. Now she has all kinds of scuffs on her head. Marks. She's nasty. Her body's not that bad, but she's stinky. And then we have Muffy after. So she still has this little uh, pen mark, whatever it is, because it's just not the time of year to get proper stain removal. I did try, as you could see in a previous clip, but it didn't really do anything. So just like uh, one of those mini aerials, I'm going to have to wait until the spring, put her on my stain removal list. So she's um slightly more beat up than the other cabbies. I don't know if she's played with more or what, but um, I feel like her skin tone isn't as nice looking as Murphy, who is the same doll essentially as her. So this is my cabbie um, who came with the name Murphy featured in a previous transformation video. He's wearing kind of a girly outfit. But you can see that he's got a much pinker skin tone than Muffy. Now, that's not because Muffy necessarily aged badly. That can be um, a factory variation. 
but he's got this really beautiful pink skin tone so comparatively Muffy just does not look as is like healthy but she's super cute she could have been a boy in her previous life but since Murphy is already um the boy that looks like this then we have Landon so as you can see these smaller ones were a little bit cheaper um he has a really messed up looking tuft and pretty battered face there's legit um, lint in his mouth, but there's also lint in his butt crack, which <laughs> gave me a good laugh. I don't know what he was wiping his bum with, but that's Landon before. And then we have Landon after. He looks so cute in this elephant romper. So he cleaned up really well, too. You can see his little yarn tufts are in nice condition. I did have to trim them up a little bit and kind of separate them out with my fingers because they were pretty clumped together. But he's much cleaner. He's got this really cute binky mouth. I wish I had his binky, but I do not. I love him. This is Blondie. She looks a lot like our Joy Irene Cabbage Patch doll, who we named after my mom, but her hair is the lemon blonde color instead of like the more mustardy yellow blonde. She's got the toofs. You can see her face is really raunchy. It, the camera's not doing these dolls justice. She's quite raunchy. And then she's got this nice little stain on her hand. Her tag's all frayed too, aren't they? Yep, yeah, her tag's frayed. I'll probably have to uh, fix that. She's got this nice gross little mark there. I'm pretty sure these are her original hair ribbons. We think that the that this doll might have come in this shirt. So that could be. And we have Taminella after. I was calling her Blondie in the previous clips because we hadn't decided on a name for her. But her name is Taminella after a character from the Muppets Frog Prince, Aunt Taminella. She's the old hag and um the tooth mold here always reminds me of that character because she had a, a tooth sticking out of her mouth. And I just think the shape of the Cabbage Patch dolls reminds me of one of the puppets that they used for the Muppets. So she is much cleaner. She's actually in really great condition. Sometimes if they're this old and they were really beat up, it's hard to get them to look like fresh but her skin's aged well and her hair didn't need too much trimming it didn't really have a lot of pilling and this is actually a real preemie outfit for a human baby which we bought specially for her because we think it looks really cute but she's actually changed a few times since she's lived here behold renata she is foul. The camera is really not in this lighting picking up on how greasy and disgusting her face is, but it is so shiny and she looks like super tan, even though I'm pretty sure she's not supposed to be because of how dirty she is. She's got this really cool hairstyle somebody gave her um, with these Velcro hair ties and then she's got these metal <coughs> elastics and her body is pretty disgusting. Can you see that? Like pure raunchy grub but she is wearing this nice cabbage patch pair of overalls which I have one like already that I got on eBay we have Renata Colleen's favorite now Renata is from 1983 so she is actually currently the oldest cabbage patch in my collection because this was the year that um, they began mass manufacturing Cabbage Patch dolls by Coolico. So the only dolls older than this would have been the softies. So her age really does show. I mean, her face definitely is not as greasy as it was, but it, her skin tone and everything does not look as nice as some of my other cabbies. And um, I spent a lot of time working on her hair, like a shameful amount of time working on it. And it did really help it improve, but I just feel like it doesn't look as nice as my um, twins, Evelyn and Jenny, who have like this same hairstyle but she looks adorable and this is one of the new Babyland outfits Colin picked out for her and Colin's like obsessed with her. I think Nada is one of her absolute favorites in our cabbie collection but she has this really funny like I don't know if you can tell but her arms 
are not at all the same size like this one here is way way longer and I was trying to figure out why the heck she was photographing so funny and when not uh, calling dressed her in this outfit I noticed like holy crap one of her arms is like substantially longer it's really funny sometimes that happens with these dolls because their bodies were obviously like hand sewn at the factories so she looks so cute then we have my lion Kusanala, which as Colleen pointed out, must be a girl because it has its outfit. This is my first Kusa outfit and actually it was this Kusa that I saw on the shelf. I saw like this end hanging off and I knew that that third leg was actually a tail. I heard Shelly go, Kusa! <laughs> and I could tell somehow I knew it was a lion Kusa from the shape of the hair. I, don't, <laughs> I didn't even pick it up yet and I knew. So I'm really excited. This is my favorite one of the ones we found. And um, she's got this really cool, like, two-toned hair. And this really lovely stain. Oh, I hope we can preserve that. But compared to Tucker, she's, like, sterile. And then we have Nala after. I'm not gonna lie, she's probably my favorite from this haul. I always wanted a lion kusa. And the fact that, like, she had her dress so we know she's a, a girl is extra fun because we have all these cute little cabbage patch outfits that they can share because kusas and cabbies can share clothes. She's my favorite of my three kusas I currently have. No offense to Tucker and Monty. So this is the area I uh, probably shouldn't have bleached uh, because like I said she's pinker. It shows up way way more on camera than it does in person. It's like really only about two shades different than her skin tone, but the camera is picking up on it a lot now. And But it took me forever to get a hold of the BoxyClean because I usually buy it at the dollar store. And um, I got uh, another Cabbage Patch doll at the flea market the following week after these dolls. And he had some like really disgusting stains on his feet. So I actually had to just cave and go to Walmart and buy like the more expensive big tub of BoxyClean because the dollar store was just out of it for weeks on end and I really really needed it so um, yeah that probably would have helped lighten that stain up but it's alright you can't even really see it she's so soft I think Kusas are the cuddliest of all of the cabbage patch people that I have except for maybe Ralphie he's my softy he's really cuddly too she's so adorable I love the tongue we have 1997 dancing princess gift set Ariel she's one of those mini dolls and I saw her feet in a bag because uh, most of the dolls this time around were bagged separately but because she was tiny she was bagged with this Disney Store 2014 wardrobe and doll playset Ariel um, who was wearing random clothes that did not fit her. I was trying to identify her that's why she's naked but anyways um, I got really excited because they only made two of these mini Ariels and I don't have any of them at this time but now I have her and turns out she's wearing this really old I thought this outfit looked really vintage like from the 60s and then I saw it had this special tag and at first I thought is it Skipper but it's actually Tammy related it's Dodie who is Pepper's friend and we just got a Pepper like at the end of August and now we're at the very end of October so I'm really really excited I don't know what I'm gonna dress her in but we'll figure something out and this is Ariel after so I made her this outfit because she has heels she couldn't get away with wearing like a mermaid tail and it needed to be pink so I'm not really great at sewing but you'll see how I made these in an episode of Dolly Designs. I did have to boil wash her hair twice with really hot water because her saran is kind of damaged. Like she had some split ends and stuff around her hairline and I don't know how well the camera's capturing it but she still has some like slight staining on her nose and chin which um, I did try to put some peroxide on it inside the house because it's just cold and not sunny outside but for the amount of time it takes for stains to lift and the amount of times I have to reapply it and how slow the results are, it's honestly just not really worth it for me to do it inside. Like heat and sunlight make the peroxide work faster and then therefore you're using less of it and getting better quicker results. So I think it made a slight difference. But she's super cute. I absolutely love her. This is the Disney Store wardrobe and doll playset. Her hair is absolutely crazy. I've never had one of these mini Disney Store dolls, so they're really interesting. They have super bendable legs <coughs> and little painted underwear. 
She's got a really pretty face. She looks like a perfectly scaled down version of a Disney Store Ariel. And this is my Disney Store wardrobe lady. I wasn't sure how much I was going to like her outfit, but I think it turned out really cute. I mean, the lace is very big, but these uh, flowers are from a, from a Crystalicious Brat stall. These were like the little flowers you were supposed to stick in their hair. And I decided to put her hair in this twist because it's really beautiful quality. It cleaned up nicely, but it's just so bulky that it just gets insane very quickly. And I think it kind of gives her a little bit more of like this mermaidy vibe having it in the twist. I hope you enjoyed this video. There are already pictures of these dolls on my Flickr if you want to view those or read more about these dolls. You do not need a Flickr to look at those photos. And until next time, love your dolls, love yourself, and love your life.